Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and this is Board Game Inquisition and welcome to September's Monthly Roundup. So my first question to you of course is, have you started putting up the Halloween decorations just yet? Well, okay, maybe not just yet, but the minute it transfers from like September to October, it's free game for all the spooky stuff. And God knows we could do with a bit of entertainment nowadays, right? Um, so yeah, as September has come and gone in the blink of an eyelash, feels like no time at all since I was last sitting here in the chair wondering what I was going to tell you for another month. Um, I hope it's been kind to you. Um, I hope you've, you know, got to play a lot of games, that, you know, life is going well. Um, and I still think it's really fun to sit down and just weigh in on what you've been playing, maybe what you've not been playing, the kind of games you've been picking up or you really are excited about. Um, I just think it's so important to sit down and take stock of your collection once in a while um, and that's why these videos exist so you can hear about mine and hopefully think a little bit about your own. As always this is an interactive experience I fully um, look forward to hearing your comments below um, basically you know telling me what's going on with your gaming too because it's kind of exciting to see what you're all playing. I love that about games that everybody can have kind of I don't know, different ways of enjoying them or enjoy different games for different reasons. And I love hearing about games that way. I think that's always really exciting. So if you're new here, welcome. Um, I hope you'll enjoy this video. And if you're not new here, thank you for always, you know, being so kind as to come back and listen in. And for your viewing pleasure, I have added in timestamps into this video. So if you want to skip ahead to particular games I'm going to discuss, you can do just that. Or if you want to sit and, and sit and listen to the whole spiel kit and caboodle, um, you're more than welcome to do that also. All right, so the first section of this always goes with acquisitions, right, new games. Um, and I'd like to think I'm paring down on these a little bit, but my stats say otherwise. So we'll jump right into the very first thing that arrived this month, and I'll check my trusty list. And this is Space Gate Odyssey from Ludonaut Games. Um, this is a game with a really, really stunning cover. I bet a number of you have probably spotted it before today. Um, I know I had, and I was definitely interested. And I watched um, Tom Vassell's Dice Tower review um, of Space Gate Odyssey, and he didn't seem all that impressed with it. So it was the kind of game that we were like, I um, uh, don't really want to spend a lot of money on. We're not really that interested. But we managed to pick up a copy for £10. <laughs> £10. You know, even if you only played the game once, I feel like you get value for money out of that. Do you guys think about your board games in that way as in terms of how many plays you'll get out of it before it's worth what you paid for it? I don't know. I know we like to think of it that way, but I think that this one in particular was really, really good value and it was for something we were willing to try out. So Space Gate Odyssey is essentially a game about transportation in which you're kind of building a base which little meeples will appear in and then you want to transport them off to different planets to earn victory points. Now it's not as simple as all that as you place these pieces out in your board you have to try and connect them up in a system that makes the most sense. Um, and I have to admit that this game was a whole lot more fun than I had anticipated. It's got some very nice components um, like little plastic meeples but they can get upgraded into suits so little meeples go into bigger meeple suits. I think that's just fun. Um, and you know what it was actually kind of interesting trying to solve the puzzle of how to optimize getting the most meeples you know out of your little uh, station to make them go fit on the planet. Now we played it at two players, like I play everything, um, and it's not bad, but I can see it being much more interactive with more players because you do get to take each other's spots, there are follow actions, um, you know, and there are things worth fighting for. But overall, I was actually pleasantly surprised by this. Um, yeah, and I liked it quite a bit. I would like to play it again. It didn't go straight into the, you know, we're not going to keep this pile, but actually it's going to stay around for a little bit, so we play it a bit more. But first impressions, really, really strong and really, really good. So second on the list then um, is London from Osprey Games. And I think we picked this up on the basis that last month we bought some very cheap Osprey games and 50% of them were worth keeping. So we were like, if we got another one, maybe it will go well. Um, and yet again, this is a, a Martin Wallace game and it's one that's been around a while. So, and also yet again, it was, you know, 10 pounds. <laughs> Um, so yeah, more bargain basement diving. Um, so I've not played London as of yet. 
Um, I don't always have time to play everything before I get it to you, unfortunately. Um, but it seems to be a game about kind of industrial Britain, if I'm correct, um, making money. I think there are different phases in it, like some of Martin Wallace's titles. Maybe if you've played it, you can tell me a little bit more about it and what you thought. Um, but yeah, I like. also it, it comes in the most beautiful box. It's like a book. You open it up and the inside is like that and it's got a nice insert. Um, so yeah, there's much, there's much hope for that. So that's kind of, I think that's like the last thing I think we haven't played at the moment. Um, so the next um, delivery is... So as many of you may or may not know by now, um, I'm a really huge Keith Flower fan. It's probably one of my favourite Euro games. And it's not the only key game out there. Um, there's a whole bunch in the series and I have tried some others and they weren't that successful. Um, but this one is Key Cathedral. Um, and it's definitely one of the older designs. And this is actually really interesting, um, I'm proud to say. It is nothing like Keyflower, nothing like it at all. Um, so Key Cathedral is a game in which, yes, you're building a cathedral, but you need to acquire certain amounts of goods to hand in to complete levels of this cathedral. Now, the puzzle here comes from the fact that there is a, a set board um, placement that with particular zones that will create particular goods, right? So the red zone makes brick, a little, you know, like Catan. Except you decide in what zones um, your meeples come out of and whatever zone your meeple goes into is what they make, right? So that means um, if you place your meeple kind of door at the edge between, you know, a brick and a wheat, I don't think there's actually wheat in the game, but you get what I'm saying. Um, you can choose to gather a wheat or a brick, right? Um, you get to place out, I think it's five of these total, and they resolve in order and you're competing with your opponent for these spots as well to be able to get things um it's really it's different i don't think i've played anything quite like it um am i disappointed it's less like key flower probably do i think the puzzle is interesting on its own absolutely um it's very very interesting and i keep saying the word interesting um, but I quite liked it. I do want to play more of it to see how much longevity it has. It's definitely very interactive. I think the more people you have, the better or more or worse, I suppose it might be. Um, but even at two players, it was quite cutthroat um, where I'd be trying to cut off, you know, what my opponent could get on a turn and they would be doing the same for me. Um, but I liked it. I liked it a lot. And yet again, this was a bargain too. So I'm really, really chuffed with that. So continuing with the theme of it's an oldie but a goodie, um, we picked up a copy of Hansa Teutonica. Um, yeah, it's got a pretty serious title, right? But it's one of those that are kind of like, you know, the important board game tenants that you must try, you know, that kind of thing. This, I think there's a series of those games that people are like, oh, you you should have tried this because it's, it's a classic. Um, and so Hansa Teutonica had been on the list for a little while and finally managed to get a copy of it. Um, so the first thing I'm going to know is the rule book is really bizarre, as in the rule book explained kind of all the rules of the game, but gave you no concept of how to actually play it. Like this is the first time in a while I suppose I've read a rule book as well. Normally my other half reads the rule books. He's better at this than me. And I read over it as well because he was like, I know what we're doing, but not like how any of it fits together. <laughs> um... And we were like, I guess we'll just start and see what happens. So Hansa Teutonica is a game about merchants and you're trying to connect cities for prestige and victory points and, you know, all, all the good stuff like that. Um, you have your own player board and what you basically want to do is remove the things from your player board to make your actions better. I love those type of games. Um, but how it works is there, so there are a bunch of cities and things on the map. Some of the cities will do particular things. Um, if you actually are able to build there from one from the next nearest town to it. And what happens is you place out your cubes on all of those spots and then those cubes go away. Um, and then you must acquire further cubes. <laughs> yeah, it, it is a little like that, but it's very, very smart and it's very, um, interactive and in a good way. So if somebody's on a route you want to fill in, you can kick them off it, but they get kind of benefits for being kicked off in the first place. Um, and it was kind of game that I felt like I was just getting going, but it was ending. I was like, oh no, I'm not, I'm not prepared for this. I give my opponent far too many victory points. Um, but you know what? It's very, very clever. It's much more fun than I thought it was going to be. Um, I definitely want to play it again. And I feel like now that I know what I know, I would do things very differently. For instance, if 
you control a particular town, if you leave a cube there, every time someone uses it, you get points. <gasps> Didn't even think about that. I was too busy trying to get all this stuff off my board because that's how I would think about it. So that I had more actions on a turn or things like that. But it's very pleasant. Um, it's a shame a bit about the rule book. I know a newer version is coming out at some point. Well, at least we've been told such things or they're word in the grapevine. Um, but I really like this one. This was very cute and fun. Um, also, the board's just beautiful. I think the game's quite pretty. Um, and it wasn't too long to play either. So it's got a whole host of things going for it that I hadn't anticipated. I thought it would be much more heavy, serious Euro. And really, it's more kind of medium weight, you know, almost root building Euro. Yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with that one as well. That was that was a real fantastic surprise after reading that rule book. Um, have you played Hands of Teutonica? Has anyone else played it? What do you think? What do you describe it as? <laughs> I'm like, what are you? Um, I'm moving cubes, but I like it. Yeah, it was good stuff. It was good stuff. Okay, and then the last delivery um, for this month is the Castles of Tuscany from the wonderful Stefan Feld. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Um, and this is the first game I've paid full price for in a long time. Um, as you, well, I'm not gonna use that phrase again. I love Feld. Um, I'm a big fan of dry Euros. You can see why we are a match made in heaven. Um, and this is one of his new titles, which sounds suspiciously like the Castles of Burgundy, doesn't it? doesn't it now and I don't know if that's just to lure in people or not um I have an unboxing video available for it if you want to check it out I haven't got around to reviewing it yet but it felt weird opening it up kind of without you I was like maybe you'd want to see too I think I'd want to see um and so it is like well in a sense a little like Castles of Burgundy but it's a much more basic version um and I'll explain what what this means so Basically, you have a series of three little hex grids. Um, each of them are colored, and you're gonna to wanna to fill them in with the appropriate colored tiles. Um, each of these tiles do their own special activity, kind of like Castles of Burgundy. Um, but there are only, you know, four or five of these tiles in general. And they're definitely not as unique or as specialized, I suppose, um, as the ones we're familiar with in Castles of Burgundy. Um, the turn is much simpler. You only do one thing on your turn. Um, and it's very, very kind of pared down, much simpler version um, of Castles of Burgundy. I keep having to say of Castles of Burgundy, like it's, you know, it's a game that can't stand on its own right. Well, to be fair, when it's putting its title in with one of our kind of beloved favorites, it's, it's gonna have to put up to those comparisons. Um, it definitely feels like a much simpler design. Um, and because of that, it is quick and speedy and whatnot. Um, I've heard the word kind of gateway mentioned about it and I'm like, if this really was intended as a gateway game, it needs to be at a different price point and probably have a different box or something like that. Because I don't think people starting out in the hobby are going to be encouraged to try this based on its standard uh, Leo box or the price tag. Um, this isn't a cheap game. So I don't know where they were going with it. <laughs> um, I don't think the game is bad. I enjoyed it. I'm curious to see how much kind of strategy can be kind of wrangled out of it. There's definitely steps where you're trying to kind of combo placing one tile into other tiles um, and things like that. So there's, there's a bit of that going on, but it's definitely not like the large scale thinking that you get with Castles of Burgundy. But yeah, I did like it. <laughs> I want to play it some more. Um, it just, it surprised me because you're so used to a Stefan Fell game being a certain type of way. You know, I expected there to be a number of tracks or a number of ways to victory or, you know, that kind of thing. You know, I expected there to be a lot more going on than there is. That may be a bonus for some people actually, um, because I think this is quite pleasant to play and it's very colorful too. So yeah, all good. So that is everything I bought this month. I do have two review copies that arrived that I'm pretty excited to talk to you about. Um, and the first of which is Factory 42 from Dragon's Dawn Productions. And this is going to be hitting Kickstarter on October 10th um, at 2020 on the, of the 20th of the 20th. I know they, they love putting their times at the same as the year. Um, and this is a worker placement game. You know I've been having discussions about worker placement games. Um, and this one has a cube tower, which I also think is kind of interesting. A cube tower that takes three different types of cubes. 
Um, and what this game is about is that you are organizing your workers in a factory um, to try and be as efficient as possible to meet kind of government quotas. Um, and it's kind of interesting the fact it's kind of cooperative. Yeah, it is kind of cooperative. You have to complete some goals together, but of course you still want to win individually. So that's kind of a twist. Um, and my review for that should be ready, I don't know, <laughs> ready in time within the next week or so, I suppose. So you might want to check that out if worker placement games are your jam. And then the second thing I have in my arsenal, which is kind of interesting, and I'm about a year late to the party, is Tapestry from Stonemaier Games, in case you didn't know. Um, so Tapestry, I think, like came out this time last year, right? And there was a really big hype around the next Stonemaier game, and everyone was going, ooh, ah. And then when people played it, everyone was like, we were lied to, this isn't a civilization game at all. And it seemed to really divide the community. You know, lots of people just didn't like Tapestry, you know, because it wasn't what it said it was, or didn't think it was as good a game maybe as it could have been. And yet a lot of people seem to really enjoy it too. Um, it's one that's been kind of, I don't want to say device or divisive, maybe a little bit. But it's one I didn't have any firm opinions on one way or the other. Maybe I looked down on it a little bit. So when the opportunity came to review it and its new expansion, um, so we'll we'll get to that once I get to the, the real game, um, I thought I should probably give it a go, like now that everything settled down maybe a year later. So I got to play it for the first time, I think it was last month, a friend of mine has a copy. Um, and I was pleasantly surprised. The way people have been talking about it, I thought it was going to be, you know, unplayable or strange, but it's just a series of tracks. So I'll have to play it some more and see what my own review comes up with. And I'm also curious to see if the expansion will help any of the problems that were in the original game that people seem to think there were. So um, that should be kind of exciting as well. I like the idea of looking at a game that's been out for a while and seeing what I really think about it, despite, you know, what everyone else said. So yeah, there's all that coming up soon as well. Um, so tell me what's been getting um, in your mailbox this month, if anything at all, or are you saving for something? I think this time of the year gets expensive, so board games get put in the back burner, you know, what with Christmas and all that stuff on its way. I know, I know I said it, it's a little early, but you know, you gotta start thinking about these things, people. Um, so yeah, I want to know what's been coming to your house um, and what you've been playing, of course, as well. Um, so let's move on to my section on what I've been playing. So I kind of forgot something there before I should move on to the what I've been playing section. There is technically the trade section. Um, and how, how could I have forgot? Um, but trading has got a little bit quieter at the moment. But I think this is one is important to mention because it came up on my list of things last month. So... This month I've traded away um, a copy of, oh my god, that's terrible, 1830, isn't it the name of the train game? Do you guys remember the Robbers and Barons? Did I write it down correctly? It's 1840. See, numbers, too many numbers. So I traded away a copy of 1840 for a copy of Gugong. Um, so the train game definitely wanted more people. And with the advent of further COVID, we probably weren't going to get more people let alone people that would be interested in spending a lot of time doing economics. Like, that's a time I think when we did have those friends. I don't think it's the case at the moment. So that's got moved on. Now, Gugong is one of, I've heard lots of good things about. Um, I like the look of it. The theme sounded kind of interesting enough. Um, and you know what, a trade is a trade, right? Now, the only issue with Gugong, of course, is it's, it's worker placement. And I am on the fence these days about worker placement games. Um, so Gugong is a game in which, yes, you go to different parts of the board with your workers to do specific activities that will help you get victory points or, you know, that kind of stuff. There's sections where you want to get close to the emperor. There's sections where you want to kind of defend the wall and have the most defenses there. There's a couple of different things you're doing in this kind of palace of the emperor <laughs> um, is what it looks like. Um, and to me, it was just so, I don't know. So boring. We were just doing the same activities over and over again, um, which is kind of weird. I don't know. Maybe I think it's just because there's two of us, you know, playing worker placement games. It means the board is usually too open for two players. You know, you know, you could do anything. So you don't have you're not forced to interact in any way, meaning that all of that tension that that number of spots creates is kind of gone. So we weren't weren't a big fan of Gugong. Um, <laughs> um, unfortunately, I would have really liked to like that because it was on my list for so long. But this does tie into the games I've been playing because Gugong really made me question whether or not 
um, I liked worker placement games anymore. I was just like, you know, how many worker placement games do we even own right now? I was thinking about it because I've gone through a number of them lately. Um, and, I'm, and the first one I suppose that came to mind is actually Village. So I'm going to talk about Village. <laughs> so Village is um, published by Pegasus Spiele. It's designed by the brands you may know from all sorts of other amazing games. They're very cool designers. Um, and this is a, such a unique game. <laughs> um, and this is a game in which you control a little family of villagers um, who go out in their village to do things in worker placement fashion. However, every time you do something, it costs time. And when you've spent a certain amount of time, people pass on and die as the generations change in your family. And the aim of the game really is to have them die in the, the best space as possible. The graveyard is colour coordinated and you want the most meeples in particular sections of the graveyard to have victory points. Um, I'm always stunned by the opening line of the rule book of village which says life in this village is tough and it's true the people live to work and then die um, so yeah it's pretty morbid but it's actually it's a really nicely carried theme it doesn't feel like that it's very colourful it's very joyous as you get to send your meeple out doing particular things and hoping you'll get them to die in the right locations I know the first couple of times I played it I didn't want my meeples to die which meant the game wasn't ending so the game was going on forever and ever because that is the you know the mechanism for ending the game essentially um but there's cool things your meeples can get to do um especially if you have the expansions for the game there are two and i think they're both really really good actually which is unusual i'm not normally a big expansion person but the two for this are great and you send your meeples out in adventures to either go be priests or learn to be the mayor or go trading or they head off into the world for adventures they go to the pub and then end up in an unmarked grave <laughs> um it's a fantastic game and it's been a long time since I pulled it out but I've never been in any doubt that we would keep it. I think Village is, is just outstanding and it's a, sh it's a sign of a really good worker placement game because it doesn't, it doesn't feel like we're just going out and doing the same things every time. Um, there's a purpose to them um, and it, it just I don't know what I don't know why this works and some of the others don't. But it kind of reignited my love with worker placement a little bit, or at least now I know I'm not so cold hearted and I just didn't like, <laughs> and I, I like the mechanic. I just didn't like those games with the mechanic, which is a, an odd thought, isn't it? Um, so yes, yeah, so that was Village. Um, definitely worth checking out if you get a chance. It's normally quite cheap as well. It often goes on sale, so it's well worth that. Okay, next up. So we're gonna talk about Gemtes from Spielworks. So, um, I like to say so a lot. <laughs> um, I've been working my way through the games that we haven't played in a while to see how they all felt. And Gemtes came up kind of in the rotation. It's been a while since we played it. Um, and Gemtes is a game about building your civilization, really, um, and taking control of kind of areas of the map and um kind of having your people your different type of craftsmen improve so that you can complete goals and things like that um and it's played over a number of of ages um and it's a very very cool game actually um there's some very intelligent stuff going on in gentes so you have a player board in which you keep track of the number of particular types of workers you have and it can go you can like it can go i'm trying to describe this it's going to be really hard without seeing a picture if i have a picture i'll post it up um whereby you know half your board is for s some type of workers and then the other half is for others and they can meet in the middle and you can push them over so that you can only have less of a particular type of person and more of others um this might make more sense if you played the game but i think that's really really clever um and mostly it is about you know just completing kind of goals and things like that or it feels that way to me i always liked it a lot but my big issue with it is is that there are a certain number of kind of monuments or quests kind of things you can do each round and they're the same every game there's only exactly enough cards um, for every game so I often found myself doing the same types of ones every time I wished it had a little bit more variety because I think the game itself is really really good but I found that all the games felt very very similar like I, I was always working towards the same kinds of thing so Gente's got moved into the the trade pile um, but I do think it's a really 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 good game I love how it's put together I think it's really smart I just need a little bit more variety um yeah so something like that so that is Gente's 
Um, I'll talk about one more game and then I'll run out of here because I do talk about games in the first section. And I'll talk about another Stefan Feld title. Because, <laughs> you know, it's really what you're here for, right? Um, and this is Forum Trajanum. Um, so I've had Forum Trajanum a little while now. Um, and we've played it once and I was like, we really should play it again while we still remember how to play it. Um, and this is a game in which you are Romans doing Romany things. Um, and what's interesting about this one is that you start with your own player board and it's a square and on it are a series of tokens, rows upon rows and lines and columns of tokens. And what happens is on your turn, um, everyone, there's a, two um, symbols are revealed for the entire table and what they will correspond to like a row or a column or a line whatever excel it refers to it as um so it'll be basically you can pick something from this row and then this side um and to remove those tokens and they'll give you bonuses um and then depending on what kind of color meeples you have to do things you can do things out in the big group board um and they're all you know for varying types of victory points and stuff like that now this game's really clever. I really like that mechanic of picking stuff from this line to this space as you're trying to make room for kind of buildings and stuff on your board as you're clearing things off. Um, and I liked it a lot. There are a lot of small things to remember. So we've only played two games and both times I've played something you know, catastrophically wrong. But only me. My husband always knew, but I've made the mistake. So it can't be undone. So it's a couple of fiddly things. And I know when this came out, it didn't get a whole bunch of fanfare. People thought it was fiddly and not great. Um, but you know what? I think it's well worth the fiddle. <laughs> um, I like it a lot. I think this feeling like, yes, OK, the main board is you're basically going up tracks somehow or another. But this that puzzle of deciding what to remove when from your own little board um, is very intelligent. I like it a lot. Um, um, and yeah, I, I think it's fun to play. It's very chill. It doesn't feel as complicated as some of his other titles, but trying to work things around, you know, there's 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 a good puzzle going on here too. Um, so I'm glad that we played it again. It's not going anywhere. I think it's smart. Um, but it's one I think that deserves a little bit more discussion, actually. I think it's good. Um, but yeah, I suppose, you know, I like Stefan Feld a lot. I think to the next person, it might be just a really boring Euro game. But I liked it. <laughs> um, cool. So you have come to the end of the game section. If you want to hang around now, we'll do the whole I'm a human section. All right. See you in a minute. OK, so this is the bit where I'm just going to talk a bit about how things are going, how the channel's going, stuff like that. Maybe other bits and bobs you might want to know. Um, the first thing I'm going to say is there is a new episode of the Tabletop Inquisition podcast. Woo! -hoo. And in this one, um, we're talking all about collections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's my specialist topic. I swear, if I was on Mastermind, it would be collections. Um, and you get to hear myself and Oliver talk about our collections, where we keep them, what's in them, what we got rid of, what we liked, what we look for in games. Um, I think it's a pretty fun episode, so you de definitely should go check that out. Um, and you can find it at tabletopinquisition.com, I believe. We have a website site so you could check there and see if it's there or I think we're on all those kind of podcasty things um, I'm very lucky to have Oliver be my other half and know all of this stuff thank god otherwise I would never make be, never be able to make a podcast um, the second thing to point out is that older episodes um, from you know my YouTube videos are still going up on the um, there will be games website if you haven't checked that out either it's a cool place for kind of articles and videos all board game related of course and you might find something new you might like to read who knows um, I think it's pretty cool um, and of course you know my stuff's there which is very exciting to be part of something bigger than just myself um, right so that's kind of the housekeeping stuff um, how has your last month been um not gonna lie I've ever had a, a really really tough month I know I've been saying this for many many months but I I kind of don't care because it's true and I'm doing my best to try and keep my you know my best face forward because you you know what I don't think anybody wants to be the person who's like yeah I still feel terrible yeah my life's still crap yeah 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 even I get tired of being miserable um <laughs> despite of being you know my, my my general state of being um, but, you know, there's been a couple of nice things that happened this month and I wish I felt like I could appreciate them more. I don't know if you noticed, but I made it over the 700, 700 subscriber mark. Hey. Um, and that was really sweet. Thank you to everyone who helped with that because I know I put out a shout out at like 
690 or something like that. And I was like, does anybody want to help me get to an even number? Have you not subscribed yet? And then a couple of people really took up the rally and cry and went off and was like, hi, you should subscribe. And I thought that was super sweet. Um, so that's nice. I just, I have a thing for the big round numbers. I think they make me feel better as a human being. <laughs> um, and I've managed to go past that a little bit. So that's really, really cool. But it's hard, and I know that is something that would normally make me happy that I didn't feel anything at all. Um, and it's not the only nice thing that's happened in the past month or so. Um, I also got to be um, on a morning talk show with the lovely Bez from Stuff by Bez, um, where we talked about board game reviews and kind of obligations and stuff like that. Um, and that was really, really scary, but also really, really awesome. So you could totally check that out as well. Um, on Facebook is Stuff by Bez, and I think it's also on Twitch and possibly on their YouTube channel as well. So if you want to go hear me talk about things and have people ask questions about my murder board, um, I was doing that. Um, yeah, like it's been it's been busy, but also you know, ter <laughs> also terrifying because nothing feels right. Um, I think my big take from this month is that I have to learn that there is more to life than just board games. Um, now I know that sounds a little weird, but. I'm the sort of person who doesn't have a lot of stuff in their life to begin with. Like many of you may not know, but this is the room I spend, you know, 90% of my life in. Um, I don't even go downstairs in my own house very often. Um, and it's just how, you know, the everything out there is a lot. So it's nice to be able to keep your space you're in kind of safe. And so when I suddenly didn't feel like doing anything with board games, because I just, I don't know, I'm just tired out, I'm falling flat a bit. It's like, well, what, what, what do I do with myself? Kind of, what am I? I'm very much taking on the identity part of, you know, um, being a reviewer or being a board game person or whatever, whatever that means, this, this thing um, is the thing that has held me together as human being. And it's very scary to suddenly not feel like that or not feel like you can do that. And then you're like, well, then where does that leave me at all? Um, it seems like other people get to have other interests and do other things. I'm sorely lacking in that department. And it's been a bit of a fright to go, well, well what would I be if I didn't do this? You know? Um, and I'm trying my best to figure that out. Like, I'm on a quest to like buy a couch for our sitting room. So I'll be more encouraged to go to the sitting room. So I think the rule right now is no new board games till Christmas. So you'll tune in next month to find out if that happened. Um, I hope it will, if we can find kind of the right thing. But um, it's just, yeah, it's, it's tough putting my life back together, but also it's tough not feeling like I wanna do the thing I really like doing like five things I need to do right now. I'm really excited about all of them and I just can't face them. It's not, do you guys get that too? Yeah, it's a little weird, I know, but like this is, this is basically what I've been struggling with the past month. How do you be a person other than, than this? How do you be multifaceted, you know? How can you apply yourself to multiple things and not feel like you lost something? I'm just the kind of person I think who goes gung ho into things and when I'm into something, I'm really, really into it. Um, and I'm very loyal to it as well. Um, and of course I, I do enjoy doing this, otherwise I wouldn't do it. But someone wisely told me recently, creative folks go through phases of things, you know, where they'll be all on for a while and then it will be quiet for a bit because you can't constantly be creative. Um, I never thought of myself as very creative, to be very fair. Um, you know, my badly, my badly drawn board game coverage should prove that to you. Um, but maybe it is just natural that there's times when this will all be full on and I'll be okay with it all. And then there'll be times when I just am not I don't know. I don't know how to be accepting of that. Cause I feel like if you really like doing this, you should like doing it all of the time. It shouldn't be conditional, but it totally is. So yeah, so you see, this is where my brain's at right now. <laughs> It's crazy stuff. Um, but what else is coming in the future? Okay, so the next month we should be seeing the Kickstarter preview for Factory 42. Um, I'm working on my um, review for Joan of Arc. Um, that's a big task because clearly I'm not gonna be able to mention everything about it in five things, but I'm gonna try. And I have an idea for um, a spiel video to do with Eschen spiel. Um, that I'll wait and see if it happens. And hopefully I will make a review as well for Castles of Tuscany. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm trying. Um, and if I don't get to those things, do you wanna hear my dogs bark? 
Oh, see, somebody at the door. <laughs> yeah, I have two wonderful dogs. They're fantastic. They'll guard the house real good. <laughs> I have a big one and a little one. They like to bark together. <laughs> gonna turn out you can't hear that and it sounds like I'm mad but anyway I think that's a good place to wrap it up for the day um so I'm really looking forward to hearing from you guys because I think this video is really as much about you as it is about me how are you getting on with things how are your board games happening how's things in general in your life and stuff anything you want to talk about well it'll be good um yeah and then what else do you do other than play board games um and does that make you feel disloyal to your board gaming hobby that's what I want to know all right, everybody, thanks for watching. Tune in again next time for more short and informative board game reviews. I think that's what I do. Yeah, I think it's what I do too. All right, everybody, take care. Bye-bye.